Um, Yeah. We'll get there, but it's um, you know, taking a long time. Yeah. Put it up on the table. If I put it this way, it's not going to my back in the body. Was this a planned event or not? I'm just now referring to it as a playground incident. Uh, Hole in the ground. You took off for a triple instead of a double. <laughs> <laughs> Three nil at the half. Sharks? Uh, U.S. over Costa Rica. Oh. Which game is it, Eric? I know, there's so many sports games. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the I know. Team. Copa America, of course. It's 3-0 three, three at the half. They scored three in the first half. Couldn't we kick the first half? Against a good defensive team. Hey, you know. That's I mean, incredible. <laughs> if they hang on tonight and if they tie Paraguay, they could make it out of the group. Did you see the Chile? Uh, I heard Argentina was awesome even without Messi. <laughs> it was a good game, right? Yeah, when, when you see good international teams play, it's so different from what you're used to. So who are you rooting for? Soccer, right? Right? Um, USA. <laughs> 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 Well, Chile is a little bit like California. Yeah, yeah, like the really climate, nice. the uh, wine, yeah. 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 But the Argentinians have always been interesting in their yeah. history. Tomorrow? Tomorrow? I don't know. I think, I think tomorrow. 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 Yeah. Both at the same time? I couldn't believe the Warriors and the Giants are playing exactly the same time as like Sunday, basically. It's that schedule. You just need to revert back and forth. Yeah. Okay, good evening. Everybody here? Mm -hmm. Call the roll. Councilmember Holman? Here. Councilmember Schmidt? Here. Councilmember Wolbach? Here. Four present. Uh, thank you very much. First order is oral communications. If there are any members of the public who would like to speak on a topic not on the agenda. No members of the public? So let's proceed. Ready to go? Ready to go? Yeah. Can I, uh, can I yes. lead off, Mr. Chairman? So, um, long time no see. Uh, <laughs> Not since this morning. Um, Missed you at lunch. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we, we have this item tonight. Uh, <clears throat> some of us may attend the community meeting tomorrow coverly on the uh, airplane noise issue with our consultants. Uh, so there's, we have at least three nights going. And in the spirit of budgeting, I thought maybe we could budget our time very eff efficiently here today. And if you would uh, let me uh, lead off here, you've got two items. Um, the first is really the really follow-up from your action uh, at wrap-up as the finance committee. 
And I just want to touch on, I think I can summarize sort of where we've been and where we are really pretty simply. I um, wanted to talk about uh, the finance, finance wrap-up. Secondly, the fact that uh, in the uh, interim uh, between this meeting and uh, the wrap-up, uh, we had to transmit the actual budget document and everything to the City Council in order to be available to the public for the public hearing that we'll have on June uh, 13th. And then we're back at finance tonight to follow up on some of the, uh, the, the three really kind of outstanding uh, items um, that you uh, uh, left us with after you uh, uh, essentially adopted um, the, uh, <clears throat> the proposed budget and you uh, also adopted some changes uh, to that budget. Um, and maybe you even put that up there right now, we'll just sort of so we're clear. The, um, you wanted to reduce the tree trimming cycle to from, from the 15 years to 10 years, and that added $170,000. You um, uh, added funding to ensure that we could uh, support the, the two a new RPP, uh, residential permit parking programs. You uh, added $500,000 contingency fund, which is one of the topics that you directed we be prepared to come back to uh, to speak to you tonight. Um, and you um, uh, uh, looked at, uh, asked me to come back and talk to you about <coughs> two uh, potential FTE reductions in the general fund and to look at, um, uh, in addition <coughs> to the initial sort of $2 million dollars, in capital project uh, uh, reductions that you propose um, uh, actually ask us to come back to also look at options that could uh, potentially completely eliminate any of the draw on the budget stabilization reserve uh, that was over $5.5 million by the time we got done to this um, separate from your $2 million reduction. So. To today, we're going to ID the uses for the $500,000 contingency that you directed that you wanted to see uh, planning uh, put together a la, I think your, your uh, reference was the uh, SCAP, um, uh, the Office of St Sustainability Budget Contingency. Um, we'll present some options on the capital budget to reduce the BSR draw completely. And that really was as much as a total of $5.5 million. And to talk about these two uh, FTEs. <coughs> now, the little bit of the tricky part was is that I had to transmit um, the budget to the council. So I um, um, uh, exercised some of my um, executive authority and essentially incorporated into the city manager's proposed budget the um, the additions that you all had made already. Um, so the tree trimming contract and the uh, RPPs and the planning uh, contingency and this idea of a two FTE reduction. Um, <coughs> Kylie and, and, um, and Lalo can talk about that more. That happens to be sort of a plug-in number. That's the average cost of uh, two positions. Um, and that will come into play uh, in a little bit. And I attempted to anticipate most of your potential uh, reductions. So essentially what we did was identify in the budget transmittal uh, $4.3 million in total. That would have incorporated that, if you recall, that $2 million in, um, in CIP reductions you made with another essentially net uh, $2.3 million reductions, and we'll speak to those. So at the end, the, the, uh, the budget that the public and the, uh, the council uh, uh, will have for the, have for the 13th um, still includes a $988,000 draw on the BSR. So we did not uh, get all the way there. Um, that did leave us, though, at a 20.4% BSR percentage your policies are to be between 15 uh, and uh, 20 uh, percent now there's a little bit of um, conflict <clears throat> with what we have in the budget transmittal and what we actually have in the finance uh, committee report 
And so I don't want you to get hung up on all of this. Did you guys read this very carefully and closely, the report? On page four, <laughs> on page four of the report, the actual page four, packet page six, there are in the middle of the page some potential project uh, reductions that were included in this uh, report. And they total $4.927 million. Um, and you will see that uh, I included in the budget transmittal to the council 4.3, actually 4.327 million. <coughs> and um, in the process of us working through some of these ideas and believe it or not putting the budget transmittal letter out and getting it together, we cut the Ventura buildings improvements, removed that from the list. So I was got to be quite concerned about us cutting that project out into with the potential of progress we could have with the school district on you know the longer term lease and the need to potentially be able to plan and make for some uh, investments so that is not in the recommendation in other words the Ventura building improvements still remain in the capital budget for 2017 so here's where we are everything all the changes that you ask are incorporated uh, in the budget we have recommendations on these project deferrals for, for a year. You know, we're not eliminating them. The Ramos Park improvements, the MSC improvements in this amount, and Rinconada Park improvements. And uh, Rob and Darren are here today. If you had questions about those, and uh, Hillary is here if we need to talk more about the transportation contingency, and I can talk in a little more detail about the the two position uh, reductions uh, we have. Uh, that said, I could tell you this essentially, something needs to jiggle. Um, there really is no action you need to take tonight other than you essentially accepting the 500K, you know, I mean, our explanations around use of the 500K and, you know, talking about the two position reductions we have. <clears throat> and if you accept the uh, the target of the BSR draw that I proposed, um, there is one action you could specifically take, which would be if you want to eliminate that additional 998,000 draw on the BSR <clears throat> that we were not able to identify a suitable capital project for, um, you could do that. And so the question is, um, how could you fund that? And uh, we have been, the staff has been in the process of reviewing our um, uh, revenue estimates, and I think we can feel confident, but we can't be exact today. We feel confident that we would be making approximately a $2 million <coughs> increase to the general fund revenue estimates for 2017, mostly in TOT and um, a little bit in document transfer and some of those other categories. And uh, so if you left it the way it is right now, uh, the budget that went to the council, when the staff updates the council with uh, 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 information you're going to send out this Thursday in advance after your meeting, the council would actually have, in a sense, a surplus of $2 million available for fiscal year 2017. Obviously, things that are more acceptable to spend on one-time issues than ongoing. Um, and on the other hand, if you wanted to close out that BSR draw completely, you could say, well, let's just uh, um, direct the staff to bring uh, a reduction of that BSR draw completely. And when we do that, we'd be presenting to the council that we probably roughly have about a million dollars or so in additional revenue for 2017, FY 2017, if that makes sense. So I think it's all pretty good. Um, we're here to talk about, uh, again, the three things you specifically wanted us to do, the transportation contingency, the two FTEs, and uh, how to uh, eliminate the um, draw on the BSR. And I'm done. Uh, quick question. Um, I thought that we had approved two budgets, a scenario A and a scenario B. And you have talked only about scenario B. 
what happened to scenario well, A? Well, what, what, some, what would you say what is scenario A in your mind? It, uh, it reaches the budget uh, stabilization of 18.5. So we did a mm -hmm. blend of scenario A and B and gave you a C that uh, gets to the 4.3. So if you had two million in the first scenario, and then three and a half added to that in scenario B for the 5.5. So what we're saying to you is we're comfortable with giving you 4.3, and in addition, we just received information last week from the county, we can update our tax revenue where we could close to your goal of not impacting the budget stabilization reserve with revenue. So 4.3 million of these CIP projects that are listed on page four, plus the additional $2 million. It's a little bit more than $2 million, but we're calling it $2 million for now of revenue. So so it's it's a little bit of a hybrid of the two. So and I would go back. There's, you there's, there, <coughs> your, your question's right. There's there's basically three. There's A and B here, which sort of we talked about at the last meeting, and then and then you guys had to send something to the whole council in advance of this, and so you sent a, mm -hmm. a C, a hybrid, is what you said, right? Is that, right. I get that right. But but I, I unless I'm missing something, with the recommendation to close out that nine hundred ninety eight thousand uh, with the uh, uh, increased revenue, I think that is B. What you don't have is A. You always have. You guys can default to A. It's very clear. It's right there. Okay. Can I ask a question? Let's do questions and then comments, right? Although I think it's mostly going to be questions. So with that said, let me go to the committee first. Corey. So I, I guess I'm still a little bit confused about why we're aiming for zero drawdown on the budget stabilization reserve. We're looking at like a 20 or over 20 percent on that when council policy is 15 to 20 with a target of eight, 18 and a half right in the middle um, or a little bit high, high of the middle. So maybe it's for staff, maybe it's for my colleagues. I, I still don't understand why we are targeting something different than council policy. I, I think as, as Mr. Chairman, I think it's as much for the committee um, I mean, I've, I've heard from some other council members not on the committee who have had some concerns about drawing down the BSR. Um, I think the larger question you still just need to be keeping in mind, and I think it did inform your review of the budget, is uh, we recognize that fiscal year 18 next year is actually going to be the year <coughs> that uh, we really have got to pay some attention to again sort of a long-term budget balancing strategy and I would just recall, recall to the committee um, we'd agreed actually to be able to come back in the third quarter of this calendar year to finance so that this finance committee could be involved early on in the conversations about how we start to plan for 18 and so one could make the argument that more money left in the BSR uh, as you go into 18, there's more flexibility for next year. Okay. I think, you know, I think, if I can just add on to that, I think, that, I, think that's, I think that's correct. You know, some context, you know, we're coming off a record revenue year. Right? And, you know, if we can't balance the budget in a record revenue year, right, I mean, what are we going to do when, what are we going to do when we're not having record revenue years, right? And, Good time. So I think that it's, it's a lot of the expenses this year are structural. I think you know it's 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 prep for the future. Well, I, I, as, as, you, as you said, and I, I understand that you know, we have this money in the BSR. We could spend it on stuff. So I, I guess that then raises the question of whether we want to revisit the. You know, I'll just leave it open for future discussion. But raises the question, obviously, of whether we want to revisit council policy if. We feel that the council policy is an error and should not be kept as the target. Um, you know, especially in a, you know in a uh, good revenue year, uh, then you know, maybe we need to revisit the policy. Uh, a couple other yeah. questions. Um, the last item, so on page five with staff report, uh, the 2.0 FTE position eliminations. Um, 
I'm still not thrilled with that. So I guess I'd, I'd like, well, I, I, I see that it's still identified as something that will be forthcoming at a later date, but I'm wondering, I mean, are you going to throw names in a hat and, and draw <laughs> randomly? <laughs> you know, is it, is it layoff Russian roulette? I mean, how are we going to... You darts, don't you, Jim? I mean, I know that we want to trim, you know, the structural costs that accompany having people on staff, but on the other hand, we also just had a study session on council a week ago. We were talking about how tight staff is and how many projects staff has that we've given them and yeah I would just like a little bit more reassurance from staff that this is something that is um, uh, this is something that can be accommodated within the city organization well if I might mr. chairman um, so a couple of questions with the first thing we were we, we didn't do the throw it uh, in the hat we asked for volunteers and Molly and I were the first two <laughs> volunteers. so um, I'm number three <laughs> not gonna say much that um, so so two comments so one is um, you know I, I've we went back and we took a look at this. Um, I've actually talked to the uh, affected department director, and you know if we proceed with this, you know my recommendation is we would eliminate two sworn positions in the fire department. Um, can't identify those yet because you know we go through our process of meet and confer with the union and that sort of thing. But we could budget, and actually, if if that was uh, the case. You know, those two positions are uh, a little bit pricier than the, the dollar figure we have up there. So we would make that budget uh, adjustment, and we would proceed, and we could make that work. Now, that being said... That's, and that's not two people. That's two replacements. That's two retirees. That, well, that could be two positions. I mean, we have vacancies, so we'd eliminate that. But it ultimately, uh, it, it ultimately would affect right. how we program and what we do. Mm -hmm. um, but we can do that. We can do that. That being said, since you gave me this opening, I would say this really isn't the way to run the airline. I mean, um, we need to have a strategic conversation about where we really want to go. And is the number two? Is it 10? Is it 50? I mean, seriously. And how we start to plan for that. So I wouldn't want to get in the habit of every year the committee saying, give me two more or whatever. I mean, I... Um, I'd really much rather say the council set the policy target of what you want to do, and then we really have some time to figure out what it takes. But if you pr if you stay the course with this, we can make this work. Um, and also looking at so looking at the uh, yeah I, I I won't make a long comment because I know you want to hear most of the questions right now, but I'll just say that I like what you provided here on the planning transportation contingency reserve. That is the kind of explanation I was looking for. Um, and then on, so I'm going backwards, I guess, through the, uh, through the staff report. Um, you've removed the Ventura building improvements mm -hmm. because that was the one that stood out to staff as the most important, that should not be delayed, that it would raise complications and concerns if it were delayed. It, did I understand that correctly? That uh, of these various deferrals, that was the one you, you were least enthusiastic about deferring, correct? Yes. Well, I would just say this, that it is a project we could end up not spending that amount of money for, but there's uh, significant enough interest, there is a need, and if we're able to make uh, progress, I didn't want to have the lack of the appropriation not allow us to move. I, we felt that the other projects uh, were all, all had better rationales for um, deferring uh, the start or whatever for a year. Okay, and I don't know if there's any, if you or anyone on staff present tonight can give me some reassurance that the deferral on the roof replacement by a year um, won't be a strong negative for the performance and the staff and everything that happens at uh, the uh, Municipal Services Center. Right. Uh, we did have a conversation with Brad, Brad um, uh, Eggleton, and the Assistant Director of Public Works, and he gave us that assurance that, that it would be okay. Uh, it'd be fine uh, delaying it a year. Beyond that, we would have to revisit. Okay. Could I make a follow-up? That's it for my questions. For now. Thank you. Yeah. You had made a statement about school lease agreement. What, what did you mean by that? 
I uh, thought uh, the city had taken control of inter city property now. Go ahead. Um, uh, thank you. Uh, the current, uh, we, the, the city has it, you're correct, but there's a provision in the purchase agreement that with, with by a one year notice, the school district could buy it back. And there's a formula on how to calculate the value. Uh, the majority, or I think it's half and half. Half of it is based on market value, the other half is not, it's based on the preset amount. So what we're looking for from the school district, and we've been in conversations with the uh, staff at the school, and you know, they're trying to agenda, I said, with the board, is to get that extension from one year to 10 years. And that's at, at the request of PAC, because PAC will like to invest in the facility with the city, and if they know that it's in a longer term lease, then it's worth them putting in some significant dollars. They're talking about maybe renewing the, uh, the kitchen, for example. So we are negotiating with the school district that their buyback provision That's correct. would be a 10 year lease. Right, would correct. be yeah, a longer term. So and lease is inaccurate, but the idea that we okay. could And that's agreement. why we were kind of toying with maybe holding off on the 600,000 because maybe we could put a bigger comprehensive plan, but it hasn't moved well fast enough with the school district and we didn't want to wait anymore and we think we need to move. And we didn't want to signal that we were not interested in being able to improve the project properly. Okay. Council Member yeah, thank you for this. So, um, I'm sorry? Council Member Lindy. Yes. <laughs> uh, temporarily Lindy. Um, um, so, um, a few things. In the, um, I guess this wouldn't be this year though. Position reductions, I agree with you about having a strategic plan. Um, Let's just suppose that Pets in Need takes over the animal shelter. We'll save some positions there, won't we? Some city positions. What do you mean save? We could, we would no longer have city positions? Yeah, some of those positions would be replaced with Pets in Need. One of the options, yeah, with Pets in Need. And I think, I think there's a ballpark six, six FTEs associated with it in one way or another, six positions. That, would that take place this year or next year? Well, the 2017 budget, I would presume. Yeah, the the plan is for uh, we're in the process of you know uh, assessing the RFP and in some negotiations with uh, pets in need. I mean, the plan would be to make the decision about uh, going ahead with them or not this mm -hmm. year, and hopefully sometime in the next three months. Okay. Any idea of what that might equate to in terms of FTE savings? Well, no, because I, I think I think we have some discussions about whether or not any of those positions are absorbed by them or not, or is it a completely other other folks? Mm -hmm. um, okay. But again, most of our costs, right, Lolo? I think I can say out there is in the staffing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Obviously, the facility is a, um, isn't worth much putting much effort into keeping it up that much. So it's pretty much people and so, you know so that sort of thing. Well, we'll look to the future and there'll be a better facility too. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not in the budget though. Th no, not yet. <laughs> not yet. Um, so I have some concern about, um, and Eric's not here, but I have some concern about two positions out of the same department. Um, and does this at all reflect maybe well, it wouldn't be sworn, non-sworn, because there's still positions. So can you help help me or us understand why two positions out of the same department? Well, there I are mean, vacancies in other departments, too. Well, yes, but I mean, we're, we're trying to think about, are there vacancies that, uh, well, we're not looking at just cutting some positions just because they're vacant right now. We're trying to look mm -hmm. at some positions, one where we obviously wouldn't have to lay somebody off mm -hmm. as a vacancy, but where we thought long term we could actually accommodate that, that adjustment. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, uh, we think that there's some value in, in, uh, disciplining ourselves a little bit in this area to, you know, help assist with how we sort of rethink service delivery. I just think it's 
Okay. And I, again, agree with you that just because the position is open, it's like, I, again, a, the prior downturn, you know, we were not filling positions, so we were saving on FTE just by attrition, and I think that's a good way to manage. Um, so I agree with you along those lines. Um, the, um, obviously we haven't seen the packet yet that's going to council, but, um, there are some things that we talked about as a committee that I'm supposing will be referenced in that um, staff report that's going to council. There was like there was a 3-1 vote to, uh, and you re re referred to this, the sustainability contingency saving 125000 there. Um, there was some talk of, uh, I may, I've checked my notes and my memory, and I don't have clear absolute memory on this. We talked about increasing the HISRAP funding and remembering what what Rob said about not a good way to expend that, you know, this year. But I thought we talked about, maybe Corey remember, I thought we talked about putting another 50000 or something in that to add, supplement the uh, emergency fund and then with a the goal of reaching the numbers that we put forth last time. I thought we talked about that. Yeah. yeah, it's actually the report's out. It's uh, report 6932. Uh, it was put out last Thursday, and all of what you mentioned is in there. This is the CMR for the transmittal yeah. of the budget document itself. So those, that's all in the, that report. So you made it as part of two motions mm -hmm. that you had, and so we included those motions. And it basically um, what you conveyed to us through your motion is that these were items where you did not have unanimous decisions, but you wanted the council to be aware that you discussed them. So we outlined them as the motion as she stated it. And there are other things, but I just yes, there are other things. Yeah. Correct. I just want to make sure one of them is on there, though. So that's in the packet that we received that we haven't got. I haven't gotten to yet. Oh, okay. Of yes. Agenda. Is that correct? Uh, <laughs> yep. Yeah, but, it, 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 but if you don't have it, let us know. This morning's agenda. This morning's agenda. Yes. Yes. True. Yes. Okay. Um, one of the things I, I would like to make sure that there is like, I think I was the only one, perhaps, but um, with tree trimming, I uh, appreciate that the committee agreed to go from 15 to 10 year. I was actually interested in, and not clear about why the number of differential is so great, but going for just retaining our seven year cycle. It's a And I, if there's any other information that can be provided, because it didn't seem, it didn't seem rational to me that going from a 15-year to a 10-year, which is a five-year increment, it was $170,000, but then going from 10 to 7, which is a three-year increment, was a bigger number than um, yeah, we, 15 Yeah, we had 10. discussion about, and I don't know how much of that you incorporated into the document itself, but um, the staff has been requested to be able to uh, be ready to um, more easily uh, explain that at the meeting if that comes up. Okay, it'll come up. <laughs> okay, thank you for that. Um, and so I guess I don't need to go through if you got everything that we talked about okay. at the committee before. You got those all on the list, like the wayfinding. And I call it wayfinding, it was called something else. We also included all the minutes, so it's about this big, you won't I miss know. it. Uh, won't and uh, the them. only minutes that were not there are the 23rd the wrap up, but those will be there Thursday uh, in the Thursday pack. Okay, all right, good. Um, Karen? Yes, sir. Ms. Mr. Chair, could I, could I interject just for a second if this is appropriate? Oh, I don't know if there's a way to triage what we're how we're doing this. Um, I'm just wondering if uh, any of the issues or questions related to the RPP or the planning contingencies fund, for example could be dealt with first that way sure. I could let Hillary I mean usually the planning director doesn't get to go to night meetings very often but <laughs> I thought that um, lucky <laughs> you know I thought we could you could dismiss some of these folks uh, thank you for that because I'm usually yeah. sensitive to that and was mm -hmm. a little blind to it tonight so and, I appreciate and that anybody have anything I about do. RPG okay why don't you go ahead because I don't have anything about RPGs or or, or I do about the planning contingency, and thank you, Jim. Um, and if it's Jim <laughs> so, um, what would there be a night without Hillary and a night without Jim? Um, 
So the contingency, 500,000, thank you for this uh, description. And if you can help me understand maybe what the dollar range is, what percentages are among these, because there's got to be some kind of notion, because here's where I'm going to. It's like, so, and I point to the citizen survey and I point to um, the council struggling and the ARB struggling with uh, projects that come forward. And so, and over time, uh, staff member comments about not having the architectural expertise on staff to um, be able to uh, make some decisions or recommendations that might be uh, leading to quicker, better uh, results. So I guess just looking at these, I can see how the third item could gobble up 70% of the 500,000. And so I guess I'd like some assurance or some kind of description of what the dollars or percentages of the 500,000 be, would be allocated or earmarked of the 500,000 for each of these three areas. And thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you, um, Council Members. Hillary Gittleman, the Planning Director. Um, a good question. I think uh, we were loath to put specific dollar amounts here just because we haven't done enough work scoping out these projects to be able to estimate their costs effectively at this point. But um, we did think that the urban design support and the middle field road item are two things that we know we want to fund uh, with this allocation. And the third category is kind of cleanup. We don't know what those unanticipated or shuttle related costs might be at this point. So we would, um, we, I mean, you, you have our uh, commitment. I mean, this is our intention to use the funds for the first two. Uh, and then to the extent there are remaining funds, we would put it towards other transportation and planning issues like those in the in the third bullet. Okay, and just to, this is mm -hmm. me talking here. Um, the urban design support, um, you've mentioned both um, an urban design professional and um, uh, architect, and you've got an or between them. So I just want to, Hopefully we have, we have a clear understanding that the architectural expertise or acumen, whether it's particularly or specific an architect or not, that they have that acumen in their uh, portfolio. Absolutely. I mean, and, and specifically for this project, we'll be looking for someone uh, with some design expertise, whether they're an architect or urban designer, related to uh, residential scale projects, because we want them to help us on the Eichler guidelines in addition to advising staff. So we're going to be looking for that particular area of expertise, and I'm, I'm anticipating there'll be another, you know, the, the contract will be focused on that work, and then there'll be additional optional tasks where they could support us with other activities in the department. So like ongoing planning items? Pardon me? Ongoing like ARB planning items? Yeah, they would be available to support staff on other ongoing work efforts. Okay. Mm -hmm. Those are my questions on this topic. Um, so on, on this, on this five hundred thousand. On the five hundred thousand. Um, have you got anything else that that uh, Director Gilman's staff is going to need to? No. I want to ask about something about the uh, Rincon Auto Park improvements, and I want to ask something about the revenue estimate. But if that's thank you, Hillary. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming, folks. Thank you. You can go back to work now or whatever while I have to do it. Thank you. I'll ask uh, so so what are we, so so thank you for doing this, right? This is this is sort of what we wanted. We wanted to see okay, if we wanted this, what would be what would we be giving up, right? So um, in the 3.3 .3 million in Rincon Auto Park enhancements, what are we giving up? Evening, Council Members. Rob DeGhost, uh, Director of Community okay. Services. Um, really, um, wouldn't be giving up anything because we're, we're not ready to start the work uh, next year. There's so much going on with the Junior Museum and Zoo. Okay. We have a long-range plan for Rincon Auto Park, which is yet to come to Council. We've done a lot of work on it, but it's yet to come to Council for approval. So in reality, it's not really shovel-ready for us to start in 17. Okay. Yeah. So if I hear what you said, it's, we probably weren't going to spend the $3.3 this year anyway. That's correct. Boy, that's the easiest kind of... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right. I did have one question. There was a... And maybe you've answered it, right? Mm -hmm. There was a bunch of discussion about, geez, you know, there's eight million dollars allocated in the vehicle pool. You know, suppose one of it went to 2018 instead. 
I actually like the process where we ask you guys to make the best fit, right, as opposed to us trying to micromanage it. Do you have any comment? You have any comments on that? I, I think it's more appropriate. Yeah. That one's a little more challenging because it's so diversified in the funding yeah. sources. Because it's you know, I, I, in my mind, there's 13 major funds, right? And so, just about all 13 of them contribute some sort or another. And so the bigger items are going to tend to be you know your fire engines, your, your ladder trucks, the stuff that you're looking at. Mm -hmm. And so you you start getting to sedans and what we're hearing from the staff is we've been pushing it off as a result of prior council direction to hold off procurement mm -hmm. or replacement until we had the audit items done so we we, we have a, a backlog of items but those monies are uh, in a way they're being deferred anyway mm -hmm. and but we shouldn't send them back to the general fund for example because they right. they really need it and there may not be enough well, some of it was reallocated. Yes, and that's just it, right? that's just because there was there's the backlog. Uh, you know, I think if we were in a normal time, there'd be a much smaller reallocation number than what you saw. And the other thing I would ask was, so he said, well, the the nine hundred thousand dollar gap will revise our estimate of how much revenue we're going to bring in this year. I'm sorry. The nine hundred thousand dollar gap will revise our estimate of how much. So is there a is there a specific reason for that as opposed to you yeah, know, sort of <laughs> well, you know, we, it, we it's a bell curve anyway, right? And we'll just right, I right. reshook my uh, yeah, magic yeah, ball. That, that, right. I'm now gonna it's explode the, what I owe it. Sorry, uh, that's how we got into this pension mess yeah. back fifteen years ago. So okay. no, that, no, that that's a, uh, a good question and fair. I, I I don't take offense to it. Uh, what actually what happened is the county revised their numbers. It, so wait, we're going to come back to you and give you the majority of the change is going to be property tax. And as you may have heard, the school district had an 11 percent astronomical increase. Well, I did hear that. And so we were more in 8 percent when the county gave us the number okay. in, in for 17. And so now they're going back and looking at 16 and they're saying, oh, gee, it's grown even faster than we thought in 16. And here are the reasons in here. And so that's what we're working through. And that's why we're not ready to get into the details with you tonight because we're at, we, we got the information late last week. We had the first meeting on yesterday, was it Tuesday, yesterday afternoon. Uh, and we, you know, I have all sorts of questions that, you know, because I'm sure you're going to ask me the questions. And so uh, we, you'll see that and, and um, we'll give you the, the details and we'll be ready to discuss them on Monday. Okay. So once again, so once again, we get some luck. You know, and I think <coughs> there's there's a good and bad with that. The good is that it generates additional revenue. The bad is that it seems like it's going to get even more uh, less affordable for some folks as these values yeah, appreciate. Of course, of course, yep, of course, and may or may not be sustainable. Question. Well, I'd like to go beyond the question. Uh, let me see. Do I have any other questions? I don't think I have any other questions. Corey, you got a question? Yeah, actually, I, uh, if I may, I just had a couple others. Um, one, picking up, picking up on, yeah, just questions for me. Uh, picking up on this discussion you were just having, is it typical to get this kind of an update at this point in the year from the county? You know, I'm thinking about the analogy to the... Right. The state process, right. um, where you know, budget yeah. proposal comes out early in the year, then you have the May revise based on updated estimates, and then there's another month following that for discussion. And it's yeah. it, it's difficult for us to you know if we're looking at a better year, maybe some of these deferrals we do this year instead of deferring. I mean, I'm thinking about how it changes our calculus, and it's just tough to do in our last week when we're we already submitted. Our budget to the full council and everything right and you know it's not unusual to have changes so, uh, sometimes we don't report the changes right away because where we're at the point is we'll just come back to you either at the year end 
or in the mid-year and make the adjustment. Okay. Uh, it just happened that, you know, it was th the timing <laughs> just fit the situation. Uh, we could have just gone forward with the 4.3 number and le left it along at that. But given that we have this information, we felt that it was important for us to bring it, bring it uh, to you. Um, you know, the numbers that where we when we uh, did this um, were pretty much in April, and because you mm -hmm. have to publish the document, mm -hmm. so you go with what you have at that point. And our experience has been different now that we got gotten to the beginning of June, and so some of our other revenues have shifted, but they're not big enough of a shift for us to get into all those details. So I, I guess I'm wondering then if we as a committee or perhaps on full council, when it comes to full council uh, next, this coming Monday, Monday. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, if we want to identify you know, what our least favorite trim was, <laughs> <laughs> you know, the thing we felt most heartburn about cutting this year or deferring this year to say, you know, if the revenues increase, that would be where we want you to look first to um, to reinvest, and that's just a, an idea. I'm not not making that as a as a motion. Just a, a question for us all to to think about. Um, and then my other question right now is, while Rob is here, um, uh, something I, I've actually noticed um, out at you know just thinking about park improvements and something I, I should have brought up earlier in this whole discussion. I don't. We don't need to get into a big protracted discussion, but. Um, I am concerned about safety on the Los Trancos Trail at Foothills Park. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted, you know, again, looking for reassurance, <laughs> looking for reassurance that um, the budget that we've provided does adequately address the funding need to improve the safety. Um, we're, we've got a you know, bridge that's been out for a couple of years now, and we want to make sure that that gets worked on uh, before somebody gets hurt, frankly. Yeah, good evening. Darren Anderson with Open Space Parks and Golf. Great question about the Los Trancos Trail washout. This is the backside of this long trail within Foothills Park that's got uh, structural problems that can't be remedied through our normal maintenance operations. So staff's kind of diagnosed this problem and tried the, the kind of ad hoc staff fixes that were, that were not effective. And so we've added um, enough money. We've got a price quote from our uh, reputable trail contractor and added this to the ongoing trail budget, so we're gonna get it repaired this coming year. That's great to hear. Thank you for confirming that. Actually, the staff can get a fix, so we're turning to the city council, so you guys will actually be going out there this year to actually fix the trail, but we did get you the money for it. Well, I'm, I'm getting tired of this conference. Yeah, I, 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 so I, the next one was out there with shots. I run that trail often enough, so yeah, I'm, I'm very familiar. But can I say at this point, I'm a little sensitive to holes in the ground? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Some exceptions may be made. <laughs> Any, anything else anything for those else? our parks and rec guys? That's that my question too. So, can we let the parks and rec guys go? Or you're gonna you're gonna comment? And should they stay around for that? Um, I, they don't have to. Cool. Yeah, thanks, guys. We have numbers for the public. I'm not sure if they want to speak. Okay. What's now? Oh, we didn't call. For, oh, yeah. So we've had council questions. So before we go to comments, we should see if there's any members of the public that want to speak to this item. Uh, any members of the public want to speak to this item? As we have no cards, we'll proceed. Did you want to say something? I, just, I didn't know which of the items the last one he spoke about. Uh, we were talking about the budget reconciliation. Um, we have not got to the, the next item on the agenda is uh, the uh, meaning purchase changes on purchasing process. Okay. Okay. So if you want to talk I'm about that. so far. Okay. That's great. Council Member Schmidt. Um, yeah, I just want to make a case. The goal of our meeting tonight is to talk about the 2017 budget and our preferred finance committee's preferred alternative to it. Uh, I am a strong advocate of Scenario A, which attempts to get uh, the budget to our 18, around our 1815 traditional 
of gold and surplus. Uh, just a little context to that. Uh, it's a long-standing policy that anything over 18.5 is available for infrastructure. Um, the postponing of infrastructure while we have money does not make sense because it merely says next year we're going to have twice the level of infrastructure payments. Uh, there's no other reason to keep money in above that 18.5. And I'd say we voted for infrastructure unless staff makes the decision whether they want to use it now or not. I think the other side of uh, scenario A that's important is the two staff members is in a good year, a good year that is likely to be even better. Uh, we should keep in mind the longer term goals of the city. And one of those is to have a staff that is sustainable. And with our escalation taking place and our long term liabilities, it's important to recognize that over the last three years, we have added 24 people, 24 new staff people, which is going to increase those long-term liabilities substantially. So it is important, even in a good year, that we keep our eye on those numbers. So I'm a strong advocate of scenario A as a framework for achieving a long-term sustainable budget. If I, if I just might clarify, I think on the position reduction, that exists in every one of the scenarios, A, B, or, as we call it, C. Yeah. Secondly, um, uh, I would say that what, what the finance, well, what we recommended, and then what the finance committee has recommended, um, we had... 3.23 general fund FTEs, the funds that are most susceptible to the uh, ups and downs of our fiscal situation. But with your two reductions, you've reduced that to 1.23 positions. We've added one position this year in a year of what nobody would say is reduced demand as a community. <laughs> as a matter of fact, the demand is there way. There are four people in other. In other funds, that yes. is correct. So but the ability to are fund connected. those other funds are more within your discretion. Well, the same people pay for them, <laughs> as well as the long-term liability. To your point, can we give you a potential scenario, what it would look like to achieve your, your thoughts? Well, I think my thoughts with the uh, the two positions are in all the scenarios, right. so that's mm -hmm. not different. The key difference is I do not think we ought to defer, uh, you know, to long-term investment in our infrastructure in order to have a 20% yeah. BSR. That does not make any sense. And, and I think part of our response is the staff capacity when we went back and looked at it. Yeah, that's staff's desire, but I think the the council should sure. take the position that we do want to invest in our infrastructure yeah. and keep our so so I think you can adopt a sustainable the, our recommendation and and have, make that statement and they're not uh, in conflict at all and I would just add to it uh, secondly I think we have existing council policy well, am I correct that yeah if if we are anything we have over eighteen point five. In any given year, the city manager does have authority to transfer that difference to the infrastructure reserve. And, in fact, I have been doing that every year for the most part, <laughs> right. for, which has right. been part of that. So I, I, I think you could even assume that even without direction, I mean, if things were looking okay, we would yeah. we would move it. And yeah. it's less risky even is the fact that we, we don't have some plans to be able to spend it. So whether it's in the IR infrastructure reserve or the budget stabilization reserve, it's all in the same I mean, yeah. it's just different pockets in the same pair But of from a, a council perspective, it is a good policy to be saying, 
we want to maintain our infrastructure, our parks and our trails and our roads and so on. So, and this is a way of making sure that the budget does that. I have two thoughts on that um, that I throw out just for, you know, group sort of all us trying to get our brain around, right? One is that, and, and, and this could be just, you know, I just need to think through this, right, which is somehow the idea that we're spending more money than we take in, so the budget isn't balanced, and yet, the re and we're burning down the reserve, and yet we still have, quote, unquote, more money than we need in the reserve. I need to sort of think through how all that works together. At the, at, at fir at, at the first order, it seems somewhat incongruous, right? But, but I, I believe it can exist, right? The second one is, if we're talking about sort of what to do, and this is a more general principle, and it goes back to Corey's point, which I think is a good one, right? Which is maybe we should, should take a look at what our policy is relative to this. But it seems to me that one of the things that should be on the table, in addition to taking a few extra dollars and putting it in infrastructure, right, is a Section 115, right? And, you know, which is also, it's a third pocket in the same pair of pants that, that you're talking about. But I wonder, since it's all, since the, since the actual money is sitting around in assets somewhere, right, I mean, some of those vehicles, Earn a better return than others, right? You know, I mean, if it sits in if it sits in general treasury, it makes two percent. Whereas if it sits in a section one fifteen, maybe it makes five or six or something like that. Mm -hmm. Whereas if in infrastructure, then you got to sort of sort of go figure out exactly what the equivalent would be. So, so I guess what I'm saying is I think a section for one fifteen ought to be one of the vehicles we considered mm -hmm. to park to something park you excess do. stuff. I mean, you could depart from. Whatever you could, you could leave the recommendation as I presented it in the transmittal letter, and and uh, you, when that two million dollars uh, in additional revenue is up, right. you could uh, reprogram could that, that to the fifteen. And the difference there is that that money isn't fungible. I mean, that is, it, it's locked up in that fund. Right. But on right. the other hand. You, you've already made it very clear that you have an unfunded liability that is not going to disappear on its own. Right? Right. So the one I guess I want to make sure, though, that the city manager, when he introduced the budget, said, we got to really start worrying about 2018 now. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I want to make sure that the decisions we make now are the best ones to set up the 2018 will not be break the bank no matter what the revenues are. And I, and of course. Uh, um, and I think that's why one of the reasons we felt that, you know, we as staff that the recommendation was okay because we know we need to do the infrastructure. The, uh, and the money's basically being set aside. It's not being designated for something else. Once we start designating for something else, that's when we get in trouble. If we send it to the 115 trust, uh, you still have flexibility. Because let's say that we have a real difficult plan in front of you and you don't like it. You could, we could, and let's just, I'm making up numbers here that the general fund share of the right. pension is 20 million. Right, you could take some out of the 115 and then. And 19 out of here and one from over there and you're right. still good. And the marbles uh, under a different wall. Right. right, and then, you know, we still, you could still, we talked a little bit about this, how Suzanne reminded me we can, you know, send a little bit to the 115 and a little bit to capital. You, you, you have ways to do it. And, and it's still, you still keep your flexibility. Um, so a couple of ways to get to your point. The $2 million revenue hits your target. Uh, a million in roughly from the two projects, Ramos and MSC gets a million, another million from the revenue. There's a combination. So there's different ways to do to your point, if that's what yeah. the committee wanted to do. Good. Okay. So a couple of questions. I, I appreciate the conversation has gone on so far. And um, to Jim's earlier point, I don't think we'll go on too long from this. But um, a couple of things. Um, so, well, the obvious thing is, you know, a reason to do the C and or, or B actually um, is because it's a responsible thing to do is to balance a budget. I mean, 
uh, it's just a practical matter. Um, that said, um, there are some things that can still float around at the full council meeting. And I didn't bring the CIP book, but aren't there a couple of things in that that we also talked about that we wanted to fund that are CIP projects, like the um, uh, Baylands walkway, the, the boardwalk? That's in there, isn't it? I thought it wasn't funded this next year. Am I wrong? And the, and the Lucy Evans just look through. building itself? We I have the funding. I'm not sure year. what year it's in. Right. Um, but we do have it funded. Let us look. So, so for me, it's like rather than doing the MSC route, we're going to put any extra funds beyond a B scenario back into infrastructure. I think the public and my personal perspective is that better spent on those. And I think we could be commented about those before. The other reason to have a B scenario is um, to have that extra money to put off over into infrastructure is, and I brought this up before, we have both the post office and Avenidas, which are also infrastructure. And uh, we don't know yet, and I know, Lala, you've talked about bringing forward funding scenarios, but wouldn't it be nice to have the money available as opposed to having to look at other kinds of yeah. uh, revenue sources and streams for all of the funding? I think that's a good point. I, w I would also say that uh, we'll be the council before the end of the year, but, you know, we've got uh, challenges in the golf course funding. I think we've mm -hmm. identified those preliminarily, so we'll even know that by the end of this month. Um, we actually, I think, even in the track watch program, even though we have funding in there, we don't necessarily want either have full year funding plus we're exploring capital investments, you know, as far as technology and cameras mm -hmm. out there to look mm -hmm. at sort of moving in a new direction. So there will be, separate from the systemic challenge of what to do in fiscal year 18, there will be additional costs that are going to need to be absorbed one way or another after you adopt the budget. And that's why those things are why I think good to be a scenario B if we can achieve that. Um, because we do have these other costs are going to be coming up during the year. and. Well, you get the point. Okay, it's 7 o'clock. You have one mm -hmm. more? Yeah, so to move us along, um, you don't need a motion tonight. That's correct. Correct? I mean, let me, let me just state, right now the budget that has been transmitted to the council I don't want to. We're only doing ABCs here, so it can't be that complicated. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, it's, it's essential. I say it's more like B with an adjustment. You know, is what is what we have. If you want to take it a little bit further and include the fact that uh, you know, hey, uh, we wanted uh, we want to go on the record saying you don't want to see uh, any drawdown and that uh, new revenues take that. You can do that. Uh, I do think that what. What we've taken to the council is essentially the finance uh, committee's review and adopted budget, and there is nothing that precludes you guys also from saying everything you're going to say next week as council members again at, at the whole. So it's really up to you in many ways. And I look to the chair also. Is there any particular additional message you want to send to the council mm -hmm. after today or not? You know. Yeah. Okay. At this point, I'm inclined to say that we can just wrap this up, um, given that it sounds like if we tried to add any additional comment to accompany the budget at this point, uh, that might take us a couple of hours just listening no, to I, oh, different yeah. priorities and things here. And it might be best to just um, to let this ride at that, this point until that, next week. That would be my judgment. Oh, good. That would be my yeah. judgment. Because yeah. we're well. going to have to go through it again in a week. Yeah, anyway. I mean, I think the, the issue with the, if this comment, the, the issue with the, uh, you know, the tax revenue thing. I mean, yeah, we could say, okay, we declare it balanced, right, because of that. But, you know, t as much as I would like to do that, because I think it's important to be precise and transparent in these matters. At this point, we're sort of in the, it, it, it's sort of a confidence interval kind of thing, right? I mean, you think, you know, there's a range of outcomes, and we're within the range of outcomes right now, and, and there's a certain likelihood, and depending, and, and we're at the point where it sort of doesn't matter where you peg it, we're in the range. All right. right. So, All right. Okay. So I, 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 I would be satisfied with Lori. Okay. Just a, a comment. I guess I don't interpret 
of rising budget stabilization reserve as a balanced budget. It's not That's, rising. It is. It's going from 18 last year to 20 in the new budget. That's, and I don't... Uh, well, let me just say I'm willing to go along with the uh, uh, the recommendation that we don't do anything as long as the understanding is that we retain the policy that anything over 18.5 is at the discretion of the city manager. If something comes up, to come in and say, "Here's ways of that know, policy to, still exists." Yes. Yeah, well, I think well, we haven't changed that. So yeah. we don't need a motion to yeah. Yeah. not it, change it. It's a temporary increase because we need to pull it right back out for 18. So yeah. you're going to go back to 18 if nothing else changes, right? It, so so it, it's a temporary number. It's you're just kicking the can down the road for a year. Well, yes and no, because some of the projects, I mean. I mean, you're right to say that, um, not questioning that. At the same time, there are projects every year that get kicked down the road because something isn't ready sure. or the staff can't, you know, right. that, so, so it's kind of a moving target anyway, so it's not like we're just saying everything that we're not doing in 17 is going to get piled on to 18. It won't necessarily happen that way. That's true. Okay, are we good? Yep. Um, it was delightful spending much. some of the, the spring with uh, you all in finance. And Kelly, why don't you say <laughs> we something? We missed, missed, sure. missed, the, missed the second half. She of was the, the heroine. She, no. she was the heroine <laughs> of this, really. Uh, yeah, I, I think I got to take the. We're not uh, uh, <laughs> I got to take a, a, a quick minute to to really thank Kylie. Paul and Steve, uh, the remaining members. Uh, <laughs> team. You know those revolutionary <laughs> war, the five and drop. You know how you guys wanted two positions? I offered six. Just <laughs> 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 <To> say. <laughs> they did an outstanding job, you know, in uh, many, many long hours. Um, so thank you, Kylie. Thank, thank you, you very much. much. Which Thanks. certainly don't go unrecognized. <laughs> thank you. All right. See you guys. Suzanne, leave this in your hands. Go upstairs. Okay. You guys, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Thank you, folks. Thanks, Jim. The uh, next paint item we're right doing a little switch of staff here. Okay. We're bringing it to you. So maybe while we're switching, that I can tee it up if you're okay with that. Okay. So okay. just from a, a just vote, you guys are going to have some remarks, and then we're going to see if there's a public comment. And yes. Now we count for questions. That'd be great. Okay. Thank you. Uh, questions. <coughs> um, I think the last time we updated the code, and maybe Albert has the data. I'm not sure. Um, it has to be over 10 years ago, or about 10 years ago. Um, so we, we we don't take these changes lightly, and we don't make them uh, on a regular basis. Um, we have here tonight. Uh, oh. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, uh, John Montanero and Albert Yang uh, from the city attorney's office. John is from my shop. Um, and uh, w what we want to do is give you some recommendations on muni code changes that we believe will better the organization and efficiencies um, and improvements. You know, one of the things we talked about on the prior item was that um, we've been adding some staff and we've definitely been increasing our CIP and you saw that not just in the general fund but all the other funds. Well I haven't given John any more staff to procure and uh, these capital programs have very labor intensive uh, processes. Uh, anything to deal with construction it, it has a lot of time in the administrative part of the organization. Uh, Molly's shop, our shop, and it gets very complex. You're dealing with millions of dollars and various levels of risks that you're trying to protect the city from. Um, uh, you know, with the commodities, you know, we're one of the only cities that has so many different commodities, as I was telling you earlier. Um, there's Albert. Thank you, Albert. And so with that, uh, let me go ahead and turn it over to John and Albert to uh, make some uh, quick uh, remarks on the presentation. And then uh, we'll go ahead and uh, open it for public comments, if any, and to, to your questions. That's good. Welcome, guys. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, to all the point, uh, without having bodies to throw at 
challenges. Certainly looked within and turned to technology and, and innovative thinking to try to uh, make up the difference there. And, and as such, it's, it's paid well. So the city, city's had some studies done uh, to the first bullet point. Um, a report came out. Uh, and this was a study that benchmarked the city uh, against industry best practices and uh, other agencies of similar procurement stature. And the report uh, made offerings of recommendations for areas of potential improvement to our procurement and contract processes. Uh, since then, we have successfully uh, realized a number of uh, recommendations that have been implemented and uh, all while continuing to uh, pursue even more off of that uh, report. That kind of segues into the other points here um, that are a result of that. Uh, SAP streamlining in our own ERP system. So looked within how we could work smarter, work better, uh, found opportunities to automate functions and eliminate some outdated processes. Uh, purchasing has then, as a result, accelerated the purchasing of, uh, uh, the processing of requisitions to purchase orders uh, in an effort to increase turnaround times and uh, also improve some integrity of, of uh, performance. Additionally, uh, purchasing is steadily improving on uh, reporting out of the system, uh, developing richer reports so we can make uh, uh, better uh, intelligent decisions as we move forward. Uh, we had competitively gone out uh, to seek an e-procurement system. Since then, that system has allowed us to convert our, the city's bidding and contracting processes from a paper process into a digital or paperless uh, operation. Um, and in doing so, uh, purchasing has um, realized efficiencies, proficiencies, expansiveness, cost savings, and improved uh, transparency in our procurement activity. Um, and uh, the training that's come around also as well uh, ASD's purchasing division has been pursuing strategic training for the staff so that we can find ways to work even smarter. Uh, looking at you know, cooperative purchasing, uh, master agreements, anything that can consolidate and uh, further make efficiency of how we do business out there. Uh, we've also uh, looked outward at our training towards city departments and added the dimension of doing more group focused training and also we're in development of an online self-paced uh, kind of procurement academy if you will for a knowledge center that will allow people to work at a, uh, another dimension of uh, learning um, there is also what we're quite proud of as a paperless workflow in our office space. So we, we initiated that by, again, competitively acquiring a um, electronic document management system. We've taken all our files, imaged them, and now no longer generate any more paper documents. We work digitally through our office space on producing all the work that we do. Uh, as a result, that has provided 25% more office space by eliminating file cabinet systems accelerated document retrieval by as much as 90%, cut office supply costs by over 50%, wow. considerably reduced errors in file management, and allows for integrative electronic workflows between systems and our customers, other city departments. We've improved turnaround times as a result. Uh, we've been knocking days off at a time here as we move further downstream with, with our initiatives uh, for departments to uh, better realize uh, uh, services from us. And uh, if I may add, um, our efforts have gone unnoticed. Um, over the months, I've fielded phone calls from other agencies from as far as Stamford, Connecticut, wanting the conference call with me on how we're doing this because they want to get involved in, in moving in this direction and they kind of see us as leaders <laughs> in our little corner of the we, we nation. 
Which uh, brings us to uh, municipal code changes. So today we're seeking changes to the municipal code that will further enhance purchasing initiatives to address business needs in a smarter and more responsive manner of having even greater turnaround times and uh, more dynamic support to our customers. Um, and that leads us into what changes uh, that we're, we're seeking here. Uh, the first bullet point here is uh, uh, a desire to move from our department limits of 5K to 10K. Uh, this is something that uh, the report had benchmarks showing other agencies and where they are, some much higher. Um, but this would certainly play into our efforts to build on our P-card program, utilize cooperative purchasing as a means to and save a lot of time for not even solicit and et cetera. Uh, increasing professional service contracts to 50K. Yes? How long is the limit on $5,000? Since 2004, I just uh, looked at, uh, refreshed my mind on the report, and it went from uh, 3,000 to 5,000 since my recollection. I might have been four to five, but it wasn't a big movement at all. Years. Yeah, and um, you know, it, 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 it's for an organization our size, it's, it's low. We know of other municipalities, um, some larger, some with equal um, procurement stature. 5,000 seems, seems pretty low. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Yeah, inflation during that time has been over 20. <laughs> percent probably closer to 25 percent well yeah if it's if it's two so percent it's two percent a year then it's still not double but even so five thousand seems pretty low right. a similar argument can be made with the professional services threshold uh, so we're looking uh, to increase that to 50 from 25 to 50k um, state and other cooperative purchasing agreements uh, is, is sort of the nouveau approach for public agencies now to uh, share resources and uh, take advantage of leveraging spend, some of these being national efforts of sorts, and of course it's great time savings uh, from an administrative standpoint as well. Uh, decentralize the low dollar procurements for departments where appropriate. This is an opportunity for departments to, uh, through these, these changes, be able to uh, go through our procurement academy as it would be to become self-sufficient and allow us the bandwidth to be able to oversee that activity and glean opportunities for consolidation of contracts and uh, just smarter approaches to how business is done maybe measure performance of our vendors through vendor report carding kpis that sort of thing uh, further uh, cost savings uh, and risk mitigation opportunities there there's data behind uh, a lot of what we've been doing and wanting to do going forward. Uh, here is sort of a breakdown of um, dollar thresholds here. And as noted, uh, in here when you look at the, there's the council contracts, the service contracts, non-council approved. Uh, when you look particularly at the 10 to 25K area is what we're looking to add in for the uh, departments to do some contracting work, but the growing the 5 to 10K um, range is, is really what we're hoping to uh, see a good change for. Uh, creating bandwidth for the purchasing department to be able to function more strategically. Uh, um, I just wanted to say that, that one of the things that you see in the SCA, we talk about the number of purchase holders versus the number of procurement card and that's been steadily growing over the years. We anticipate that the procurement card activity will increase as a result of this change and, and make us a swifter organization because you're going to get the materials you need that much faster instead of waiting for a procurement process where you can just go online and buy it or deal with the vendor immediately. And we're, we're in a threshold between 5 and 10 that there's not a lot of risk. We, we monitor the activities very closely. We have a uh, pretty good online system that allows us to validate the information. Uh, and so it, it's something that we, we take uh, to heart in terms of making sure that we're still reviewing the activity. And in addition, while we would 
not have to go through the administrative process of the REC, the PO, or the P-card. We also have the rebate program built in to that, which gives us some bit of uh, revenue back on our efforts. And I think it will also allow us to then do better analysis on what we're buying instead of constantly just buying. We can also analyze, can we take advantage of uh, grouping transactions and uh, getting master agreements and a better deal because we have now the data that says we buy X amount from you and if we do that, what can we get as a discount? So for example, Home Depot, we were able to do that once we accumulate, accumulated the data and said, this is what we buy, what kind of discount would you give us? And the thing that enables thing that enables you to do that is the P-card, as opposed to purchase orders? With the P-card, it allows us to do that, and we use an account uh, uh, with uh, Home Depot that tracks the activity for us, and then they give us a discount. And then the bank, depending on the thresholds we hit with the procurement, gives us a cash rebate for those activities. Yeah. And, and the use of P-card also shifts transactional activity from the purchasing desk, which frees up a little more time to be a little more analytical or strategic in how we look at the activity out there and our analysis. Right. That means anybody, well, not anybody, but somebody in a remote, somebody, somebody in a remote department could do it instead of going through the central purchasing office. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Do you want to put up the next slide? Yes. Okay. One, one question. You don't. I mean, you don't sort of have. You know, lots of twenty-four thousand nine hundred ninety-five dollar contracts that were structured that way specifically <laughs> to get under that. Right. right well, uh, that's and, part of and like seventy-four thousand nine hundred fifty dollar contracts split up into three yeah. and stuff. Well, like that's that. the kind of stuff we look at in the P card. You know, to make sure that people are not what we call contract splitting. splitting right. You know, and uh, when we do get those PRs at those level thresholds, we we question them. You know, it's like, are you going to come back with an amendment? You know, in a month or two. <laughs> Yeah. We, we do watchdog analysis on, on the activity out there and try to teach the departments better, <coughs> smarter, more compliant practices. <laughs> Can I ask a related question, but that's good. And don't mean to get into the weeds on this, but um, I'm uh, aware of this. There's a tendency to go to the big box stores. You mentioned Home Depot. Um, you know, uh, but I don't know how much we compare to, I know that they're like open, um, what do you call them, like you, you put it online, to probably, probably sometimes, sometimes you go out to individuals, but are there um, Ace Hardware versus Home Beat Depot versus blah, blah, blah. And the reason I mention is for practical reasons, because it's uh, two, two of them, one is because some businesses are local uh, and local ownership, and the other is local sales tax. Um, <clears throat> just in this particular case that I'm mentioning. Um, and the other is that, um, you know, to pick on Home Depot, which I'm not shy about doing, is that they used to start out in advertising like that nobody would beat their prices, blah, blah, blah. It's like you go to Home Depot now, it's like they aren't the cheapest around by any means. So I guess I don't mean to get into the weeds on this, but do we reach out to try to support local businesses and maybe not the big box over the local businesses in a proactive manner. Right. So, if I may, uh, when we talk about, say, cooperative purchasing, for instance, just because big box store is in that cooperative and, and they try to leverage spend and we can just simply go use them, um, which we learn out of the Office Max um, mm -hmm. audit mm -hmm. that there is a due diligence that we have since mm -hmm. adopted to look across the landscape. So, for instance, in recently addressing our, our city copier need, um, I, I looked at cooperatives and actually went to each one, went to all the competitors and say, what are you doing with cooperatives and not doing with cooperatives, and built an analysis out of that to really measure the landscape. You could almost say it was a, a kind of solicitation process in itself, but yes, we certainly do try to consider the, the larger landscape. In terms of your point to the local mm -hmm. shop, uh, we run into some challenges. There's one local warehouse, excuse me, um, um, hardware uh, that classified the sales as miscellaneous. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. So you have to classify yourself when you, ask you when you register your business, mm-hmm. what type of business you are. Mm-hmm. And because we restrict the codes of where you can buy to ensure that we have better protection, mm-hmm. miscellaneous is not allowed on their yeah. procurement card. So our employees were going in trying to buy stuff and they kept getting denied. And so we try to work with those vendors, you know, the local shops, to, hey, change your designation mm-hmm. so we could use you. Uh, and, and so, so we... You know, so we, we try to. So you're working through that? Uh, we, we do. I mean, if, uh, you know, I have to, uh, you know, also be upfront that that's not our majority of our purchase either. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we've s- instructed our field personnel that if you're on the field and, you know, let's, let's just pick Alma. Right somebody's here. on yeah. Alma mm-hmm. and you need something and you need it right away, go in the shop and get it mm-hmm. right there. Right. Because by the time you order it from wherever, it's going to delay the project. Mm-hmm. So. In our new e-procurement system, it uses the NIGP coding system, which is a national practice, and it's built of parent-to-child commodity code systems, so it can get pretty granular. Mm. And so we encourage anyone that we uh, encounter to register in that system, and it allows them to select codes so that we can match opportunities with uh, vendors. I appreciate that. Okay, uh, so I think Albert's going to give you the tail end of the presentation here, and we'll be ready. Sure. Uh, so I'm sure you can tell there's a, a wealth of red line throughout the <laughs> ordinance. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, the majority of it is, is pretty, um, you know, kind of minor changes in wording. Um, there are two larger changes that I do want to highlight, though. And uh, the first is a, a change to the way that we... <coughs> Uh, will be, would be able to solicit um, wholesale utility commodities. So that's when we go out and we, you know, purchase gas or electricity um, through our utility uh, utilities department. You might want to point out what page that's on. And um, that starts on uh, page 17. I guess is the the meat of that. Um, so that's packet page 31. Packet page 31. Is that right? Correct. Um, which section was that? Is, is that two three zero three four zero? Yes. 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 Um, and uh, just briefly, the the way that we currently um, do the solicitation is uh, we have two steps, two different RFPs uh, or RFQs. Um, the first for uh, the master agreement, which really just sets forth the general terms and conditions, but not any of the business terms like the pricing. Uh, of the utility, and then we do a separate RFP when we actually want to go out and purchase the uh, the commodity. Um, so uh, the proposed changes would allow the utilities department to um, skip over that first solicitation um, and just utilize a pre-approved master contract. And if, if there is a counterparty out there that's willing to agree to that master contract, Great, sign them on, and then when we get to the point where we actually want to purchase the utilities, we'll issue a solicitation at that point. Um, so uh, it's uh, apparently our two-step process is is somewhat unique, uh, like a lot of things in Palo Alto, <laughs> and this would be bringing us more in line with um, you know the rest of our peers. Uh, do, you, yeah. do people or do people ever want to renegotiate the terms of the master agreement? They say, well, I want my piece, and this needs to change. And I want this and that. And uh, I, I think that common? that's certainly a possibility. I, I can't speak to how how often that happens. Um, if that were the case, uh, then I, uh, we would have to bring amendments to the master agreement uh, to the council for approval. Um, the second uh, major addition to the code is um, in section. 2.30.490, and that would be packet page 41. Um, and that is the addition of uh, procedures for design build procurement if the city should ever wish to pursue that avenue. Um, <clears throat> a few years ago now, uh, state law was amended to set forth statewide procedures on design build. Um, our proposed changes here generally track that language, but this, the state procedure um, limits design builds to buildings, parks and recreation, and wastewater facilities. 
uh, but it excludes things like streets, <coughs> highways, other um, uh, other water resources for some reason. <laughs> um, so uh, the proposed amendment here would um, broaden that scope so that we would have the freedom uh, if we wanted to to pursue design build on any public works. And I think with that, we're open to the next step in the okay. discussions. So I was going to suggest that we see if anybody from the public wants to speak, and then we'll take questions from council. Is there anybody in the public who would like to speak to this item? Oh, very impressed so far. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, in that case, so uh, usually when we have somebody watching us that doesn't speak, it's people wanting to earn their their merit badges for scouting or something. Do you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. I feel a little. <laughs> why, don't, why don't we do both questions and comments? Uh, so I actually don't really have any questions. The staff report is very good. I think that the work that went into this is very good. Um, I'll mention that I've heard for quite a while from people affiliated with the city in various capacities that our procurement process can be cumbersome, to put it politely. Um, and it looks like we're really taking the steps to improve that you know, through the staff level changes uh, following uh, that, uh, that report from uh, 2014 and now taking the next step and making the, um, uh, the code changes uh, to further move us in the right direction. Uh, and the way I see it, I, I really see four values at play here that we should be thinking about. Um, and those are one, uh, efficiency for the staff to get stuff done for the city, uh, which is important for us on council and for the community when we, you know, and for, for staff as well. Um, two, cost effectiveness to make sure that we're uh, not wasting the public's money. Three, transparency to the public. And four, council oversight to ensure accountability and responsibility. Uh, and I actually think that these proposals uh, do a good job of balancing those four. Um, you know, there are a couple of things um, that all, you know, one thing you know, that in particular really stands out, you know, for instance, on page five of the staff report, pack of page 12, uh, the emphasis on design build contracts still having to come to council before proceeding, right? I think that that's, that's one thing I just want to say it, say it out loud, make sure that we're, we're clear about that, um, that we're streamlining the process, but we're not cutting the council and the public out of the process. And that's really critical, and so I appreciate that. Um, and for this, I guess maybe a question: um, We can't adopt an ordinance tonight, but we can. A motion will be needed to recommend it to the full council. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Um, I'm happy to make a, a, a stab at a motion, but I'll wait to see if colleagues have any uh, questions before we get to to action. Very good. Don't have anything. A couple of questions on page nine. There's a mention there of uh, that packet page or next page. A packet page nine. There's a mention there of piggyback purchasing opportunities. Now it sounds like this means not just amongst ourselves, but uh, cooperating with neighbors. Other cities, or is it a big thing? Is this countywide, citywide, area-wide? How, how are you thinking? It, it could be national. Uh, as the, the key is that it has to meet the parameters of what we're buying. So it can't be different. Minor things, but it has to be the same. So I'll give you uh, an example. The last one we did that comes to mind, the ladder truck. We piggyback with San Jose. So San Jose had a deal. And we went to the vendor and said, we want the San Jose deal, uh, the ladder truck <coughs> that we bought between Mountain View and us. And the vendor said, if you do it by this deadline, we'll give you the same price. Is there any danger of us uh, beginning to compromise standards? And oh, in order to get a good deal, we need to use what they're using instead of what we have. The firefighters will not let us do that. In that right case, no. Uh, it, 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 you know, it, it, you you bring up a good point, and there's been 
plenty of times where staff says, we like that one, but can we make these changes? And we say, no, then that's a different animal or different procurement. And, and you either find another one that is like it or we go out for a uh, bid. Also, our municipal code on piggybacking stipulates that the process has to be si substantially similar to ours. So yeah. it's not that we'll, out of convenience, go use somebody who just did it however. But is this a goal of really uh, a much higher percentage of our goods would be based in common and maybe cheaper than it is now? Is that our goal? Well, I think it's one of our goals. Uh, it's a combination of goals, I think. I, and there's uh, consortiums that are set up, and some of them are backed by the state, for example and where the state does this, does the bidding, and then it helps smaller agencies, and then we feel, why not tag along if it helps us as well, where the state's already negotiated pricing for tires, for example. Yeah, what Batteries. percentage of our purchases might end up in <coughs> such pools? Uh, you know, it's, it's not something we've delved uh, deep into yet. We know we're buying vehicles this way now, uh, predominantly, um, and, and we're starting to look at uh, other capital equipment areas. The, the smaller things, uh, it's something that our department needs to <coughs> do further analysis on. Yeah. Uh, well, it's an exciting prospect, and yes. so yeah, it makes a lot of sense to push, and I'm delighted you're doing it. And then keep in mind, anything above 85 still comes to you, mm -hmm. and we have to disclose to you how we either bid that or piggyback. And so, so I don't think it's a high number. Uh, you know, uh, it, it, I think we're looking more on the lower end to make it faster for the, you know, anything about 10. Uh, but those are the areas that we want to also look at. Okay, you mentioned the number 85. Uh, page 22, packet page 22. Under Public Works Contract, that first paragraph A looks like you've crossed out 85 and gone to 250 uh, without. Uh, actually, I don't recall that that changed. That was been 250. That's the exception. Public Works, is, yeah. Yeah, public works uh, contract says we changed it in 2004 to that amount. But this is the red line, isn't it? And the red line in 85. Uh, it's it's a it is. To help us all get on the same, oh. we're talking about 2.30.210 section A. Yeah. Uh, so this was actually this is a language cleanup. Um, <clears throat> on public works contracts, the purchasing manager has authority up to 85, and then the city manager has authority up to 250. The way the ordinance used to read, the city manager only had authority between 85 and 250. And we felt that didn't make any sense. If the city manager can sign up to 250, he should be able to sign under 85 as well. So we're just crossing off the, the floor uh, to the city manager's authority there. So you're changing the minimum, not the maximum? Yes. Okay. So still okay. So 240, the city manager still has to sign off, but not, a, not the purchasing manager. Right. Okay. okay. But the 250 then is a constant. Yeah. I, I didn't clarify that there were some exceptions like, like this one. Good question. Okay. The, okay. Uh, the other thing is on page 42, the design and the design build. Now, my understanding of the description is traditionally you've had one firm bid to do a design, then you go out and do another round of proposals to get someone to build. And now you're saying you can go to a firm that does both the design and the build. But on page 42, it seems to be saying in the new language, that whoever does the design cannot participate in any way in the bill. Uh, <clears throat> so um, the, there's a concept of 10% design uh, that comes into play here, um, where um, we would hire a, an architect to help us develop the um, basically the RFP for the design build project and that architect would generally do a very basic uh, 10 to 20 percent design of the project and then that would be the basis for our solicitation of a 
completion of design and then full construction by a single entity. Now, the way we're doing it now, do we actually have three parties then doing the 10 percent the for, for yeah. the full design and then the build? So sometimes now we do have uh, kind of like a feasibility or you know preliminary design uh, contract followed by a full design contract followed by a building contract, and all those are bid separately. Um, so that's where the saving is. We still, this upfront design still might be, has to be done separately. Yes. Okay. Okay, those are my three questions. Actually, I actually only have one, which was about the design build process, too. Which is, so, so if you do the design bid build process, you split the design between somebody that designs it and somebody else builds it. Why do we do that? Uh, I think that's the that's the traditional method. I understand, but yeah. I mean, my question is going to be, what do we give up? Okay, but but what's the rationale for doing it that way? I mean, we could still do it that way, but if we had this other option, you know, what's the? Yeah, I think you know mainly is to have different parties and and have the segregation of duties and the difference in, in responsibility, so you have. Uh, but, but is it a? Is it a you know, we want to cost optimize the two phases differently, right? Well, or is it, I think there's. It, we're worried that somebody's going to sort of pad <laughs> one and, and make it up on the other. Or Can I actually offer? Yeah. Well, it might be like uh, getting your car appraised or getting your car repair. Uh, um, you know, you're evaluated yeah. at one at one uh, shop yeah. and having the repairs done somewhere else, so that they won't. Uh, Design the Cadillac version to use another car. Yeah, <laughs> they won't design. They won't the that propose that the Cadillac version yeah, if they're the ones who are going to get to build yeah. it. Uh, well, I, I think um, one of the one of the downsides of design build, uh, yeah. you know, as a single process, is that you do need to go and get someone to do that ten percent design, yeah. create the bridging documents, and scope out the project for you. Mm -hmm. And even though we do sometimes still do that with design bid build. Um, you know, it's it's also quite common just to have a single firm, you know, do the whole design, uh, followed by a, a construction company later. Yeah. So I, I think there's probably a little bit more flexibility in that design process mm -hmm. to, you know, if the city's needs change, um, as opposed to having to, you know, uh, do a lot of work up front and then be fairly committed up front. So do you foresee, if, yeah. assuming this, code gets changed. Now you have the option to do it both ways. Do you foresee the majority of it going to design build or the majority of it staying at design bid build and a few projects going to design build or how do you think that's going to I I think it's gonna stay mostly the way we are. Yeah. There's split camps on both and we okay. have staff that has experience wonderful design build and some awful design build experiences and so I think it, it really it gives us the flexibility to have that as a consideration for us to bring to you uh, the reasons why we think we should go a particular way for this particular project mm -hmm. and then that, the other, okay thank you mm -hmm. on the other one the master agreement I mean it sounds like having come to council once is better than having come to council <laughs> <laughs> But it also keeps us out of hot water and audits because, you know, we have a master agreement in place. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, we did to the extent that you can standardize that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. We, we did run into trouble on the local park where there's dispute about yeah. who are they following the designs right. or not and who is responsible. So, but that brings up a question for me. It's like, so, um, you know, the audits. So did the city auditor review this for, um, you know, Pitches or complexity issues or up to the last minute uh, unfortunately she couldn't come tonight um, but she said you're more than welcome to follow up with her it's in the time that it goes between now and to the full council uh, but she was supportive of the changes okay that's good to know mm -hmm. I have nothing else so do you want to make a motion I'd love to so I'll move that uh, finance committee recommend to the full council, adoption of an ordinance amending Palo Alto Municipal Code Chapter 2.30, Contracts and Purchasing Procurements, included the staff report as attachment A. Second. Care to speak your motion? 
Uh, no need. Can I speak to your second? Yeah, I just would support what Council Member Walbeck said up front that you know it's good after what 10, 12 years to come back look at this. The world's changed a lot, and uh, it's a type of efficiencies that we're looking for. So delighted to have this. Sharpen the saw. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. I want to thank Albert and John for all Thanks, the work on the update. Thank you. Yeah. And thank you for your so support. Just a point of question. So is there any reason this was unanimous? So typically it would go on consent. Is there any reason that it shouldn't go on consent? Does anybody anticipate? I mean, I'm okay with it being there, but just thought I'd raise the question. Okay. Yeah, it looks straightforward. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Future agendas? Yes, thank you. Um, our next meeting is the 21st. Yep. Uh, we're going to give you the update for fiscal year 16. So we talked about revenue increases in 17, mm -hmm. and I kind of touched on 16, but so there's rev new, new revenue numbers for 16 as well that we're going to present to you mm -hmm. uh, in the third quarter report, so we'll, we'll get into the details then. Um, then the commercial and residential impact the Nexus study review coming back to you. Mm -hmm. um, and then you go on break. We I was going to say, when's the next one after that? It's not till the middle of August. It's right? uh, August, uh, the third week in August, because I think I think you're off so vacation kind of from that. Yeah. Council, so yeah. 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 And uh, right yeah. now we don't have anything on the agenda. Okay. Um, if, if we happen to add something, uh, we'll definitely you know let you know in 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 the upcoming meetings and. Then um, we get towards the end of the year, um, and you know, right now we don't have everything that we need to bring to you. It's just a placeholder for a couple items there, and that's all I have. Let's see, Lalo. Just in terms of regular things, aren't isn't there the like the fourth quarter? Or the yeah. Uh, so that's the year end that you're referring to the fourth quarter, yeah. and then the CAFRA. Uh, we will also commit it to you to before the end of the calendar year to bring you some conceptual next steps on balancing 18. Uh, so that's uh, right. on our um, radar. Um, I, I'm having some challenges committing to you that the long range will be done by December given the staffing levels that I have. <laughs> but, you know. She can do it. <laughs> <laughs> I want her to stay, though. <laughs> 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 that will ensure it. <laughs> she won't get out of the building. Because um, it's, it's not an easy effort, as you could imagine. Um, but we're going to try our best. But, you know, it, I just wanted to put it out there that it's, it, it is a worrisome task at this moment, given that there's only three left. Um, and um, But just in a very general statement, I guess we're coming out of a quarter where we had very intense meetings, but there's not likely to be a lot of intense meetings in the third quarter. Uh, at this point, it doesn't appear. Um, my peers may have items that I have not heard of yet, so stay tuned, but uh, yeah. it does, it, they're not on my radar yet. Well, you have... Uh, we do have the city manager giving lots of cues that, that maybe this process needs to start earlier this year and we need to sort of take a look at, start looking at 2018 earlier than we normally do. So that may load up, the, that may fill up some of the open space on the, on the calendar. Yes. If, and some, if some of that translates into finance committee meetings. And that's where my concern comes for the long range, that if we start doing that as the same team, right. and then even if we... Uh, back up the bench. They're going to be green people that have never been through the power of the process, even if they have budget experience and uh, the magnitude of the work and the analysis. So, so if we, if, if I would feel better if we focus on 18. But you know, we'll get to that bridge when we get there. And I just, you know, just wanted to send the signal early on to you of my concerns. Uh, with that, then. We are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ten to eight. <laughs> Four zero. <laughs> oh. That